And there you have it. The markets are officially closed on this Friday, November 8th. Welcome, investors and traders. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. Let me first point out that they will soon be adding NVIDIA to the industrial average. And this confirms what I've been saying all along, that the markets are being manipulated more now than ever before. Remember, if you're following Dow theory, Charles Dow looked at the industrial average and put that together as a leading indicator for the economy. And so he separated the industrials from the transports. And with them adding NVIDIA to the mix, it's just a, a way of manipulating the price so that when one of the stocks in the index starts to go sour, they take it out and they put the next best stock in there to keep the index moving higher. Now, it's not so easily done with the transports. As you can see here, Dow Jones transports are starting to pull back with this super wide divergence from the moving average. And so while I will continue to report on the industrials, I will be referencing the transports more often over time. So let's go back to DIA. And you can see that we had this big gap this week after the election. And interestingly enough, we got a pivot on the CCI, even with the price going up. Now, that's a negative divergence. But what I'm looking for before we can draw this downside target here is a drop in the volume. So I have that horizontal line there as a reminder for me to keep an eye on that volume. So once we get the drop in volume, you could start drawing your downside legs. Now I'm putting a shorter term downside target on DIA at 433.72, which brings us right to this breakout point, which is known as the roll reversal. Remember, former resistance here will ultimately turn to support here. So again, downside target on DIA right there, as I highlight that once again in the data box is 433.72. I will leave this as an intermediate term target for all of you option traders out there at 411.32. Now, stay tuned to the very end so I could show you what we have been doing to make money on the way up. It's one of the best months that we've had all year, and we're currently tracking one of the best years we've had in a good long time. So this is a absolute trading heaven for option traders and swing traders. So hopefully you're enjoying this market. If you're looking to learn how to trade, I would say make sure you practice, paper trade, learn how to manage risk, follow along with the Sticky Trades publications and trade small before you start trading big. Tiptoe into the market. Don't just jump in there with all of your money expecting to make a fortune. It does take discipline, it does take patience, and you have to be able to control your emotions. We had a, a webinar last night. We were highlighting one of our best traders, whose name is Jeff, talking about his ultimate success this year. In a very short period of time, he really has very strong percentages of return, but we talked about the disciplines and also the need to follow the charts and follow the signals and not your emotions. So let's go into IWM. We have the small cap index, which is the Russell 2000. We do have a bullish engulfing candle there. But remember, 80% of the time bullish engulfing candles work. But when do they usually fail? They fail at the end of up legs. That's when 20% of the time those bullish engulfing candles do not work out. And so when you combine that bullish engulfing candle with a massive drop in volume here with the oscillators hinging and even pivoting down below, that means watch out below. And so I will be drawing my downside target for IWM. I'm going to pull it back to the first level Fibonacci retracement here. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw this zigzag line here and I'll show you what I'm talking about when we highlight the ABCD pattern. So once we get the pivot lower, we can then put an A at the top 
of this pivot point once the pivot forms. And then what happens usually is the market zigzag its way down. So it could take a little while for that gap to fill, but I ultimately believe that it will fill. So swing traders, be ready for that. Make sure you're preparing to add negative delta for you option traders out there. And again, follow along with the charts and you'll have a great time. So short-term downside target on IWM right there at 232.67 keeping this downside target at 212.78 more as an intermediate target and we're looking for this gap to fill i'm going to talk a little bit more about gaps here in a minute especially when we get to the vix looking at qqq this is the tech sector look at that we got a baby candle there right little spinning top on a drop in volume down there and the drop in volume has caused that cci to go through a full pivot I'll magnify that for you so you can see that. Now, as I condense the scale here, you can see that the CCI is currently reading 181. Now, remember, over 100 is considered to be overbought. You can see that we have not been at this level on the CCI in a good long time. And the stochastic back here is also pressing the extreme highs in the overbought territory. So here is one that I'm going to put right to that roll reversal remember we're looking for a pullback to the original breakout point right there short-term target on qqq is 502.17 we'll keep this target here as a longer-term intermediate target of 464.86 taking a step back you can see why that is not a far stretch this is my target on the queues right here so when you're looking at the monthly charts and looking at these negative divergences down here, along with that wide divergence from that moving average, that is not at all a far stretch to think we could pull back and hit those targets. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm waiting for the pivot points. Next week is options expiration week, and we are going to be taking in a whole bunch of cash credits. So members who are involved with me right now, get ready. Next week is going to be a very exciting week for us as we pull in the cash like the market's an ATM machine for us. That will also help us lower the cost basis of existing positions to help lower the risk. Again, if you're not a member yet of Sticky Trades, we have a 15-day trial that costs you absolutely nothing. You don't even need to put a credit card in with us. Just go to the link below in the description box and you could come on down and participate in my webinars. You could listen. You don't have to trade. You could just listen like you're a fly in the wall in these trading rooms and be able to watch and read the questions that our members put out to me on these live events, especially on Wednesday. We had a great session on Wednesday where we analyzed over 50 stocks in 60 minutes in our Percentage of accuracy with regard to hitting those targets is extremely high. We're currently tracking and have been tracking 82%. That is documented. We have a third-party analyst who's built an algorithm that tracks my targets. So we can verify that, no problem. And I've always invited those who have high percentages of accuracy to come on over and join us. When we put our thinking caps together and we crunch the numbers and look at the analysis together, it just makes us much more efficient as traders. I don't walk around with a chip on my shoulder and say, oh, you can't beat that 82%. I welcome people to do that. And if you are at the higher levels of your percentage of accuracy, please stop on by and speak with us so we can get together and maybe do some webinars together. That would be a heck of a lot of fun to do some live webinars with you. All right, so QQQ, again, to reiterate, downside target for the short term is 502.17. Looking at SPY, this is the S&P 500 ETF. Again, I'm going to be talking a lot about this one. We have one, two, three, four green candles in a row. And look down below. Volume is dropping. Oscillators are starting to pivot. CCI is my most favorite, and it's the most sensitive. So I'm going back. And I'm going to draw this to the pullback point, which is the origination of the breakout here. And so my downside target for SPY is 587.54. Moving on to the VIX, 
I made everyone a guarantee on Wednesday. If you didn't get a chance to watch my midweek report, go back and listen to the recording. Again, I keep the links in the description box below so you can use that as a reference to know exactly what I've said and how you could learn from these videos over time. They're very educational. We want to make sure that we're helping people understand what's going on so that they don't just follow the talking heads and get all emotional about the market because... If you're a buy and hold investor, just buying and holding and even hoping that we're just going to continue to go higher, you're actually putting more risk into your portfolio than you might imagine. Risk management is a very, very big part of what we do here at Sticky Trades. I promote the 1% rule for managing risk, and that's a simple math formula that all of our members use. And I repeat that over and over throughout many of the webinars and almost all the trade publications that we put out. Now, getting to the VIX, I'm keeping that upside target right there of 26.68, but I'm going to give you another short-term target, and I'm going to draw that horizontally. This is where the gap fill will be. It's going to be from the low of that candle, which is $20.20. That is the guarantee that I'm putting out that that gap will fill. So we're talking over $5 to the upside on the VIX. And why can I give a guarantee like that? That's not an income claim, by the way. That's just a target to the gap fill point. 100% guarantee because the VIX is not a stock. It's an oscillating index. And over the course of history, 100% of the gaps on the VIX have filled. Again, that's why I could give a guarantee like that. So let's start with that as a shorter term target, $20.21 for the VIX. We had some folks asking if I could look at Bitcoin, that's forward slash BTC. Taking a look at that, you can see we've got some very small candles here, major drop in volume. I will call this right back to the moving average, but believe it or not, I have a longer term downside target on BTC at 63,140. I think this too could wind up with an ABCD pattern, just like the rest of the stocks that we look at. You could see ABCD patterns all over the place. Here's A to B, pivots up to C, pivots down to a lower D. It does it on the way up. A to B, pivots lower to a C, and then goes up to a higher D. ABCD is everywhere. Here we go again. A to B, pivots down to C, pivots back up to a higher D. I think we're going to see the same thing happen, except on the way down. So be very careful of any long positions in Bitcoin or any of the Bitcoin related stocks like Coinbase, Riot, Mara, you got it, even Ethereum, because if Bitcoin starts coming down, all of those that I just mentioned will come down in sympathy with Bitcoin. You could also look at the queues because if you compare Bitcoin to the tech sector, it's almost following in lockstep. So if we're looking more to the downside on QQQ, then that would confirm, again, lower prices on BTC. Now, let me talk about the geopolitical news here, and then I'm going to give you some examples of how we're making money in this market. First and foremost, U.S. factory orders tumbled in September. You can see this chart coming from Bloomberg. You're going to see that all of the other data supports a weakening in the economy. And whether you like Donald Trump or hate him, one man is not going to turn this thing on a dime. It does not turn that quickly. You cannot reverse this and think we're just going back into the golden age of economic growth and lower interest rates. Right now, if interest rates continue to go down because the Fed keeps lowering, they are welcoming inflation right back in the front door. And we are on the brink of recession. And when you combine inflation with recession, you have the worst of the Jimmy Carter days, which is known as stagflation. Non-defense capital goods shipments are also in decline. And notice what has happened in the past. When capital goods shipments have dropped, we generally move into recessionary periods. Why are we not in the recession right now? Because they're holding back. They don't want to use that R word. Oh, there isn't a politician right now in the world that's going to want to have recession on their watch, so they've been putting it off. But I do believe, and I've said this before, that as soon as Donald Trump is sworn in, I think they're going to let it all loose 
and drop it on his watch. Mark my words, we have this recorded for you to reference in the future. I'm feeling pretty confident that that's what they're going to do and they're going to try to hand him a bag of problems and he's going to have to work out that with his cabinet members. Now, if you had a chance to watch Jay Powell, when he was asked if he would step down, if Trump would ask him to leave, he outright just came out with a one answer and very adamant, no, that was it. He's digging in his heels. I think there's going to be friction between Powell and Trump when he's sworn into office. And I don't think that's going to bode well for the general markets or the economy for that matter. I think there's going to be a lot of friction, including what happens at the Treasury. We'll have to see. Again, this is all my opinion based on what I've seen and what the data is showing. So you could either just stay long and hope that's going to keep going higher or you can stay long, protect against downside risk, or you could trade options like we are, make money on the way up and prepare for a longer term downward move with longer term options. And that's exactly what we have going. And again, I'll show you that here in a couple of more slides. I want to, again, point out what's happening with the delinquency rate on commercial mortgage backed securities. Look at this, folks. It's going through the roof. This has now risen by five times over the last two years. And now delinquencies are officially rising at a pace only seen after the 2008 financial crisis. So again, the writing is on the wall. The data is showing it, but no one wants to claim that we are in an economic pinch. They don't want to talk about recession. They don't want to talk about unemployment. They don't want to talk about the labor rate. They just kind of glance over it. And then when the numbers come out, they revise in the middle of the night when everyone is sleeping and then the markets don't react to it because it's not being released during market hours. Here's another one. The number of people receiving jobless benefits in the U.S. spiked to 1.9 million. This is the highest level since 2021 and continuing jobless claims have risen by over 500,000 since 2022 and are now above 2018 and 2019 levels. The fact is Americans are having an extremely hard time finding a job. And again, this is from the Federal Reserve. It's the U.S. Employment and Training Administration through the Fed. And this is public information that you could pull up very, very easily. Here's another bit of data from the Fed. The U.S. job market says the economy is in a recession. See, the numbers are already telling us that we're in a recession, but they have not yet added those gray shaded areas in there because they don't want to spook the public. Remember, when consumer confidence drops, their spending also drops in direct proportion. And that's exactly what a recession is. It's when you have fearful consumers holding on to the dollars and not putting it in to the market. So the number of Americans unemployed spiked to 1.6 million, which is the highest since February 2022. Now remember, this has already exceeded the levels at which the previous seven recessions started. So look very closely as I magnify that. We are in a full-fledged pivot higher, where if you look at the past, these are points at which we're already halfway through or even almost all the way through these recessions, and they haven't even marked it even in the slightest. Moving right along here, U.S. government interest payments on the federal debt had a new record of $1.2 trillion. Folks, this is mind-boggling here. The interest has doubled. This is the interest has doubled in just three years. So what happens is as interest on the debt continues to rise and our payments to carry that debt continues to rise, it eats into our GDP, which means less money coming into the economy, which means more taxes to help finance this very big problem that we have with regard to national debt. Now, here's something I want to take a little time on. The Schiller P.E. ratio, this was developed by Robert Schiller, and it's a way to determine the valuation of the market. Now, this is usually applied to the S&P, and basically it's, it's very similar to the conventional P.E. ratios that you look at on individual stocks, but the Schiller P.E. ratio basically divides the current price of an index, i.e. the S&P, and then you divide that by the average earnings over the past 10 years. This is the average earnings, not the current earnings. And this approach helps smooth out the short-term fluctuations 
in the P.E. ratio and provides a more stable view of earnings across a full economic cycle. Now, here's the simple calculation that we're looking at. Here's the show of P.E. You take the current market price, which currently, as of today, is $59.96. I just put this slide together just before the close. And you take the average, 10-year average, that is, which is inflation-adjusted earnings, which is currently 103.65, Divide that into the market price, and what do you have there, folks? 57.85. Now, that number means absolutely nothing until you put it on a chart and compare that to historic levels. I'm going to let that soak in a little bit, folks, because never before in the history of the U.S. markets has the markets ever been this overbought. This is put together, again, as of today, and you're looking at what this looks like as compared to previous times when the market has been in a bubble and right before the bubbles burst. Remember, prior to the crash of 1929, we went vertical. Prior to the crash of 2000, we went vertical. The most recent vertical move in the market is making the previous vertical moves in the market look like kindergarten play in comparison. You know my long-term views are one of the most extreme bearish opinions out there based on the data, based on the charts. I'm not trying to throw a wet blanket on the party here, right? You have to understand that what's happening is we are in a bubble like never before. You can throw the political manipulation into the equation here. And when I say that they're going to dump all this on the Donald Trump administration, I see it very clearly. Not everyone is seeing it as such, but I see it very clearly. You could just feel the tensions just rolling across the media channels. It's not hard to see. You could feel it. And so that is the condition. Now, I want to show you what we have been doing. All right. Now, last month as option traders, I mentioned this over and over again, the large majority of our positions are positive delta, meaning we are bullish on the majority of our positions. We've had these for some time now. We're bullish on the energy sector. You can see our OIH, CVX, ExxonMobil. Those are all long or bullish positions that we have, right? Now, each and every month as option traders, we roll our positions with spread traders. So last month, what we did is we took in a total credit of $38.55. What do we do with those credits? Well, we use that to pay down the cost basis of other positions, and we even apply some of those dollars to positions that might be losing. Now, we position ourselves with a mix of positive delta bullish positions and bearish positions, which are the negative delta positions that we have here, like John Deere and Charles Schwab. Right? We also have some neutral positions like Restoration Hardware that has been doing absolutely amazing when it comes to collecting credits. Now, last month we had $38.55 of total credits. I just want to show you, as of the close of business today, on this Friday, November 8th, we've already collected in this month so far $31.17. And we still have next week to be taking in all of these credits in the blank spots that you see right here. So we are going to surpass the number of credits that we had last month by far. And that means we're taking in a whole bunch of cash that we can use to pay down the risk. My goal with our members is to create what I call cash cows. The cash that we take in the form of these credits goes to pay down a lot of the cost basis of these spreads down to zero. Just giving you an idea, with GameStop here, that position that we've had for a while has a cost basis of zero, and we even have excess cash over and above what we've spent for that trade. Hopefully you're following me on this, because we have excess cash that is far surpassed what the original cost of that spread was. So with GameStop and several others that are catching up to GameStop, like Deere and ExxonMobil and Chevron, we have positions that are going to be completely paid for, and we use those as more or less, I call them ATM positions, like cash 
machines in the market. Again, if you are interested in learning how to trade like this, then you just come over to Sticky Trades, sign up for the free membership, and you could come along. Now, if you're not a member and you are just holding on to that idea that I'm thinking the markets are going to crash to the 2020 lows, yes, I do believe that. But look at my positions and you could see we're making money while the markets continue to zigzag its way up. When the markets finally break and go to the downside, guess what's going to happen with all these positive delta positions? We take them off and then we start to add to the negative delta position so that we can make more money on the way down. So even with a long-term bearish position, we make money on the way up, taking in all this cash, and we're still going to be making money as the market goes and does its ABCD patterns in a zigzag way to the lower levels. Folks, I've never been more excited. I've been trading now for over 42 years. Our members are having a great time. If you're a member out there and you want to share some of your experience in the comments field, go right ahead because you'll most likely help a lot of other people learn how to do this the right way instead of just following the talking heads that are on these financial programs. Folks, thank you so much for liking and sharing and commenting. We're having a lot of great success building this channel, and it's all thanks to you. If you're not sharing and liking and commenting and subscribing, then obviously the channel's not going to grow, but we have a good number of people that are sharing the channel on their social media pages, and every single time I put out a report, we get new subscribers. Again, thank you, thank you, and you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.